Hi everyone, it's Philip at NYC Music Services back with another tutorial. This one's about using the ribbon in Sibelius 7. The ribbon is where you'll find many of your user functions and it largely replaced the menus that were in Sibelius 6 and earlier versions of the program. And for this it gained a little bit of notoriety among many users, including myself, who found it difficult at first to find some of the most favorite features. And so with this tutorial I hope to not only show you where some of those features are located and help you get around a little bit easier but also you might find at the end of this that you might find that your workflow is improved in a way that is actually more efficient than would have been possible in Sibelius 6. So let's get started. The first feature is really not a feature so much as it is the way the ribbon is organized and it has to do more or less with the way you would work in a score from scratch from beginning to end. Now, of course, you're not always going to work this way, but it may help just in thinking about the way the ribbon is organized. The first tab is really a special tab having to do with anything related to the file itself. You can print it, you can save it, you can export it as audio or PDF. That's all under the file tab. The home tab has to do with the most elemental functions, whether it's cut, copy, paste, adding or changing an instrument, using the filter, adding or deleting bars, basically setting up your score. After you set up your score, you might be inputting some notes. Then you might go to the notations to do things with your score, whether it's adding some different time signatures, key signatures, adding some symbols or some lines. You might further edit your score by creating some text, whether it's rehearsal marks, lyrics, chord symbols, tempo text, technique text, expression text. That's all under the text tab. At that point you might wish to play your score and you can do that in the play tab as well as bring the mixer up anything to do with the interpretation or video that's all under play after hearing your score you might decide to lay it out in a way that you like you can change the staff size you might change the distance between the staves anything having to do with magnetic layout then you might decide to alter the appearance of your score and you might export the house style or import a different one reset designer position Basically anything to do not necessarily with the layout of the score but really more the look and feel of it. That's under appearance and of course the big one is the engraving rules. After that you might work on your parts. You might then proofread it, maybe add some comments or add a new version. And finally anything to do with viewing your score. This isn't going to change the score itself so much as the way you see it. Whether you see the layout marks, whether you turn panorama on or off, that's all under the view tab. So say you get a little bit more understanding of how the ribbon works and how it's organized, but you still can't find your favorite feature. Well, you can search by using this box right in the upper right hand corner. Let's search for auto breaks. And there it is. You just click on it. Sibelius not only helpfully changes to the appropriate tab, but it also dynamically highlights the particular feature that you like so it's more useful to find in the future. If you don't like how much space the ribbon takes up at the top of your screen, you can actually minimize it by clicking on the upper right hand corner on this triangle. Maximize it again. You can even assign a shortcut to this by going to File, Preferences, Keyboard Shortcuts, Other, Minimize Expand Ribbon, and then you can set your own shortcut to minimize or expand the ribbon. When the ribbon is minimized, if you click on the appropriate tab, it will show only until you decide to do something uh, in the tab. And then when you complete that action or just click back in your score, it will automatically go away unless you decide to show it manually again. If I stop and pause the mouse for a second and hover on a particular item, I'll actually get a little description which is really helpful and you'll find that in addition to a description of the particular ribbon item you also get the shortcut in this case command K to add a chord symbol. In addition to the conventional shortcuts you also have the ability to access anything in the ribbon via key tips and to get key tips you would simply type control on a Mac or alt on a PC so if I hit control, I get the first level of key tips. And then say I want to navigate to the notations tab, I type N. And I get a second level of key tips, 
In this case, I would type BL for bar line. And then I can use the arrow keys to navigate within the gallery. I'd finally type return to actually apply, say, a dashed bar line to my score. If I want to navigate back up in the key tips, just hit escape. Hitting escape once will get you to that secondary level. Hitting escape another time will get you back to the first level. And escape one more time will just dismiss them entirely. You may notice when hovering on some of these items, you get a split button. And clicking on the top part of the split button will produce the most common action associated with that button, in this case a triplet. But if I click on the bottom part of that button, I'll have more options from which to choose, including all different types of tuplets, including the option for other, where I have even more features to choose from. Galleries are new in the ribbon, and they're more visible on larger screens, but some of them are visible on smaller screens as well. Here's one. This is a gallery, and you basically can navigate through it by clicking the arrows. You can also click this downwards arrow to see the complete gallery for, in this case, lines. You'd finally just click on any one of these to put them in your score. Sticking with lines for a moment, say you wish to edit the appearance of your line or create new ones for use in the score, you would click this downward right pointing arrow and that would bring up the dialogue. In fact, these are called dialogue launchers. This is the same for symbols, note heads. A lot of times they will bring up the edit feature of that particular item in the ribbon. Sometimes though they'll bring up the engraving rules. It really means more options in whatever item that you're working with at any given time. Something you can do in the ribbon now directly is make changes to some of the things in your score. Say you wish to change the size of a particular item or change the text style entirely or change the font. This all had to be done previously in Sibelius 6 by the properties window. Now you can do it right in the ribbon. Same thing goes for layout. If you want to change the staff size of your score, you'll see in real time how that might affect your score. And again, using these dialog launchers, you can bring up more options. Finally, you may find that the ribbon is adaptable to your window. So say if you have a larger window, if you increase the size of the window, you may find that more options are viewable to you. And the larger we go, the more options are viewable. So the ribbon is adaptable. If I decrease the size of the window, all the options are still there, but let's look at rulers as one example. They might be nested within a button, in which case I would click that button and then find my ruler options. But if I resize the window, you'll see how those ruler options then expand so I can see them entirely. So that's a brief overview of the ribbon. I hope you find it useful and it might speed up your workflow in Sibelius 7. Thanks for watching.